Today's lesson, we'll be doing one of my favorite creative activities, creating a photo montage, and then making that into a mixed media piece. Photo montage is a type of collage that uses images cut out of newspapers and magazines, and then glued down just like a collage. Mixed media means that we're then going to do another process to our piece. So on top of the collage, we'll also be drawing, coloring, you can even paint on top of it. Mixed media just means I'm doing more than one process on the same piece. Mixed media can be just about anything. Our project today has been inspired by one of my favorite collage artists who actually really kind of invented photo montage. Her name was Hannah Hawk. Hannah Hawk was an artist in Europe during the early 1900s when World War I had really devastated Europe. She was part of a group for a while known as the Dadas. Dada, D-A-D-A. -D -A. It's nonsense on purpose. The people who worked in Dada were artists who felt that the war and violence really had only created chaos and nonsense in their world. So they felt their art needed to reflect that. Needed to reflect that. Prior to this, art uh, was very academic and really restrictive about what was considered art and what was considered beautiful. These artists didn't really want to make beautiful work. They used things like performances, poetry, and photo montage collage to criticize what was going on around them. They had something to say about it and they did not like it. Art can be a really, really powerful tool to tell the world what you think needs to change or it can just be something that you enjoy doing. However your piece ends up, that's just fine. That's your art, that's what you wanna do. For photo montage, we need things, uh, printed pictures like things from magazines or newspapers. So I'm going to use some images from a magazine. I've got some cardboard that I'm going to open up. I've, you know, another cracker box. You know, I like to use my recyclables. For art, we're going to be photo montaging on our cracker boxes, and then we will draw on top of that and see what happens. And friends, it is a beautiful day outside. I've actually got all of my stuff set up on my front porch, so let's head outside and get started. Okay, welcome back. The first thing that I want to do is open up my box to get my surface area going, my working area. So again, I'm gonna find all the seams. And just slide my finger underneath the seams of where the box has been joined together, the sides have been joined together, so this way I'm not having to cut a lot of cardboard. It's easier just to open them up all up at the seams. All that opened up and I want to work with this really nice perfect square right here so I think that I'll just cut everything else off so I'm just gonna follow the lines that are already there and just cut along that line if you have small scissors like I do this might be kind of hard but longer scissors would be better if I had some longer scissors around me, I probably do, because I have my very, very long scissors. Very long scissors. Okay, the reason why I want to do this on cardboard is A, I can save my paper for something else. B, uh, you know, it's recycled. If it's something that was going to get thrown away or recycled anyway, I might as well use it for art. But also, because I'm going to put a layer of glue down on this, I'm gonna cover the whole thing with glue to put my pieces on there, put my pieces of magazine pictures and paper that I cut out. So I want it to be a little bit thicker and sturdier than just putting it down, say, on paper. Now, if you don't have any cardboard and you have paper, you wanna glue yours down on paper, that's totally fine. You just might want to put something kinda of heavy on the edges to hold it in place so that your paper doesn't roll up when you put glue on it, okay? So now that I've got that done, I'm actually going to just set this off to the side. And my job now will be to cut. 
cut out some pictures from my magazine, okay? And I definitely saw some that I wanted to cut out, so I'm going to first um, go through and actually just tear some of those pages out that have pictures that I know that I want. And if I find a couple more along the way, then I will tear those out too. Interesting pictures of um, microbes, microbiome. I'm gonna tear that page out because I like that. That off to the side. It's a great picture of a hot dog. That would be really, really nice. I really like this. I like the way she's standing. And I like the expression on her face. Tear that piece out. Mm -hmm. These would be good. I don't think I'm gonna use these this time, but these would be great. Somebody jumping. Nice body movement there. This whole page would be really, really cool too. You could do a lot. If you, you'd really have to take your time and cut those out nicely. That's not easy. It takes discipline. So you all get the gist. Would go through. I like some of these uh, pictures of plants too. I might tear some of those out. It's kind of looking here. So I'm going to keep doing this. I will come right back to you when I am cutting out some of my pictures and show you how to glue them down. See you in a sec. Okay, so I've got some pages torn out of some pictures that I like. I really like these linens. And I can go into this with a really strong plan of what I want to do or the way that I typically work when I start a project like this is I have um, some rough ideas in mind of what I would like or what I just like in general. And then I just start to cut out some of the images I was drawn to. And I don't really have to have a reason why I'm drawn to certain images or why I'm choosing them. But I just start to cut those out and then I'll start to place them and then I will start to make choices. I think a lot of, you know what, I think can be defined as like an artist's personal style or, I don't know, just their style of making art, their visual style, it comes down to the choices that they make. What you choose to include, what you choose to take away, what we would call your self-editing. Editing. And it's not that one of those is right or wrong. I think it really just comes down to a consistent practice. It's like a discipline where you kind of just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep trusting yourself, but keep questioning yourself. You know, you try to look at your art with a critical eye, meaning you can love it, which you should love your art. But then you can also look at it and say, what do I think works and what do I think, you know, works less? <laughs> Maybe what could I... What could I improve on on the next piece that I make? And just keep going. But you'll never get there if you don't, you know, start somewhere. So when you're cutting out magazine images, a lot of times there's a lot, like, little intricate places to cut. And for that, I like to use littler scissors. And if you've been in one of my classes before, we've probably talked about when you cut something especially intricate like this, open up your scissors all the way all the way see it's open you don't have to go like this but you know pretty far open that's still comfortable and then I put my paper on the very back of my scissors and then I can start to close my scissors and I have to watch I've got to really use my eyes and watch I'm gonna close my scissors and move my hand move both of my hands and this is like little intricate movement so I'm just moving my fingers right now but this way I and close my scissors as I move around, say maybe a corner or a bin like that, and I get a much smoother cut that way. But this, you do have to go a little slower, and you have to really watch what you are doing. And another choice you have to make in collage, in magazine collage, cutting out pictures, is what am I going to leave on there and what do I want to trim away? Do I want this to have that little bit of black edge around it? Or do I want it to be right against the line of the body? And I think I'm gonna to try to get this right against the line of the body as best I can. That's gonna be a little harder. I've gotta really watch 
but I can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna get this guy cut out. I'm gonna cut it right on the line of the body. I'm gonna cut out quite a few more things. I'm gonna cut out more than I even think I'm going to use. And then I will come back and we'll try out um, our placements and how we decide what we want to put where. Okay, I'm off to a really strong start. This is gonna take me some time. Pause the video and cut out your images. All right, see you in a sec. Okay, so I've got all my pieces cut out and laid out. I've taken a picture of my layout so that I can refer back to it if I need to. And if it changes a little bit along the way, that's okay. Oh, there's a couple pieces I didn't include that I wanted to. So this might be something that I add. There's just a lot of experimentation and playing and deciding. Okay, cool. So I think I'm going to stick with that. Now I need to take my pieces off. So I'm just going to kind of try to keep them grouped together if I can. Set them off to the side. It's fun. And now we're going to put a layer of glue down and then start to put our pieces back on. So what you need is your water, a little cup, your glue, and something to stir with. Just have a little straw here and your sponge. I'm going to do about equal parts glue and water. Unclog my glue. This just makes the glue really, really spreadable. Really easy to get a nice layer all over. And it makes it a little bit more like Mod Podge, which is the glue that I use on my, oh, that's a little too much water. Uh, collage pieces, my mixed media collage pieces. Okay, so equal parts, glue and water. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to measure it perfectly. You can just kind of eyeball it. And if it's too liquidy, just put a little more glue in it. If it's real thick and it's not spreading really easily with your sponge brush, uh, put a little more water in it. You know what to do. Okay, that looks good. Now, I like to do this just like a little by little. Now, normally I would be looking at my picture that I've taken, but since we're using my phone to film, I won't do that right now. I'm just going to do my best guess and start to lay some pieces down. But I remember that my little cluster of lemons was up here. And so this is where I have to start thinking about my layers. This is the bottom one, so I need to put that one down first. Put this one down next to it, but now this one is going to be on top of a place there's no glue right there. So I'm gonna get my sponge, just do a nice layer of glue where that's gonna go down. And a little glue on top of that where my last one goes. Awesome. Okay. I think the next thing I'm going to do is put my little guy down. And he has got this cool halo. So let's figure out kind of where I want him to be first. And then place his halo behind him. You can see that? I'm gonna glue this down. And I'm just really trying to look with my eyes where things were and then do my best to place them back there. And I probably wanna have um, like a wet rag or paper towel near me so that I can wipe the glue off my fingers as I go. 
something that it's okay to get a little glue on, but if you're using the Elmer School glue, that's it'll just wash right off. That's water soluble. You don't have to worry about that destroying anything, any fabric. It'll wash out. You might have to soak it with water. And got a little moved over. So you notice that I'm taking my brush. Oops, broke that, but that's okay because I'm gluing it down anyway. My sponge, my brush, whatever you have, and I'm painting on top of these things too which is just fine because that's gonna really help them to make a lot of contact with the paper and the glue underneath and it also is going to put kind of a protective layer on top of all my paper Oops. on top of all the papers I'm putting down so then after I let this dry I can come back and draw on top of it and that will be our next step after we get all this laid down so i've already got a nice bit of glue right there so i'm just going to go and put his head down right there but i'm not going to glue any of the rest of his body down just yet i just i like to do these bigger pieces in sections glue them down in sections because there's probably things that i want to put underneath his body as i'm going but i know that i need this little piece right here do you see how i'm using my other papers to kind of cover up parts. Like I don't really like how that just stops. It just has a line right there. So I can put this piece right here. Just cover that up. A little layer of glue. Okay. Looking good so far. I think I had him holding this piece back here. And you know, the way you can make it look like he's holding is what I put, what I choose to put underneath what. You see how I have his thumb on top of that? And the other part underneath. That gives the illusion that he's holding that. And I, I, that's one thing I really love to do. I really like to use figures in my collage work human bodies um, and make them look like they're kind of interacting with the other things I've added on to them. Make sure that doesn't go off the page because uh, I just think it kind of adds a different dynamic. Like even though you know it's not supposed to be there, it looks like it's supposed to be there because of the way that they're interacting with each other. By interacting, I mean that you know, there's layers. I'm putting things down in layers. Some things are on top, some things are underneath. I'll glue this little guy down. Okay, all right, friends. Keep going, keep gluing. Go little by little, make all your choices. I'm going to keep gluing down as well. Once I have this all glued down, I will be back and show you what to do from there. Okay, see you in a bit. Hi, I am still working. I wanted to show you a little bit more of the progress that I made. I started to be inspired by the stones, so I started to draw my own stones. If you think about uh, the texture project that we did last week. If you haven't done that project, go check that out. Texture, so I'm drawing kind of texture like a little stony, pebbly path. And I thought that might be cool to incorporate, bring into other parts of my piece. I've been doing lots of drawing. I really like the line drawing with the black uh, line, just nice, you know, really elegant, clean way to express yourself too. So lots of different things that you can do. I think that I'm just gonna sit and work on this for hours and hours on end. I'm enjoying it so much, so much. Oh, I also wanted to show you, I thought this was a fun idea because I tend to do this. I drew lashes on my people. Can you see? <laughs> you see, kind of faint on that one because it's dark but um when I was a makeup artist for some years we had to do these things called face charts where we had to it's just like a blank face and you had to 
put the makeup on it and kind of show different ideas for looks you can do and you had to draw lashes. And that was my biggest challenge for so long and now I love it and I kind of miss that. So I really like to draw lashes. And coming up, friends, I've also got um, a how to draw an eyes, how to draw an eye tutorial. That'll be another lesson coming up. And I'll show you my method for drawing lashes, drawing eyes and drawing lashes. So, and then we'll do maybe some portrait drawing. So I'm still going, I feel like I'm going to add some color in here, maybe inside some of my rocks. There's just really no limit to what I can do. The only limit is, you know, what I decide. When I decide I'm done, um, and you know, it's okay to not want to overwork your pieces, but friends, especially right now where we are working on a new project and we are, you know, learning and growing and we have a lot of extra time on our hands to try new things, I would really encourage you to spend a little extra time on this. Take longer than you normally do. Try things out that you don't normally do. You know, if you, especially to my friends out there, that you make a lot of art already and you do a lot of drawing already and that's awesome and I know that a lot of you already have your personal style and I think that's awesome and I will challenge you to um, keep pushing that style keep growing keep going as an artist remember I said earlier in the video I love art because there's no limit there's no limit to what I can learn and what I can do and how I can grow and what I can discover not only in art but also about myself and about the world. So keep going, keep discovering. I'm gonna keep working on this. Uh, I'll, I'll post another video. How about this? I'll post another video. Next video I post I'll show you this once all done, okay? I can't wait to see what you've done. Send me your pictures. Remember to put in your name, what grade you're in, and what school you go to, because I would love to see all of that. Send me your questions and your requests for lessons, especially things that you all want to draw. Let me know, because I could start anywhere. So we're going to start with eyes. We're going to draw some eyes and some faces, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I love you all. Wash your hands. Bye-bye. Okay, friends. I've worked a little bit longer on my piece, and I'm all done. Check it out. I did lots of layers uh, drawing and coloring. Drew on some of the papers I put down. Some line work and some color. You can see how I chose my layers and have some things underneath other things. In my photo montage collage and with my mixed media. So friends, I would love to see what you came up with for this project. If you would like to send me pictures of your project, you can email those to the Arts Council at artscounciloKC at gmail.com. Okay, be sure to send your name and your age and what grade you're in and what school you're going to. We'd love to know that too. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this project. I had a great time. I hope you learned along with me about Hannah Hawk and photo montage and mixed media. And I'm looking forward to making art with you again. Okay, until next time. Bye-bye.